All right, guys. Well, not sure if you can see it behind me or not, but it is a snowy day. It is a snowy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this dark, gloomy, soon to be white. It is a Tuesday, November 15th, 2022, here on the planet. So, uh,. <laughs> I have been waiting for this day for, good Lord, how many months here on Collapse Chronicles, and we probably all know why, because this is the day that supposedly, which, I mean, it doesn't mean anything, it's just kind of a uh, pulling a number out of wherever you pull such numbers, where the United Nations is claiming that uh, we are supposed that the eight billionth human being somewhere on the planet today is being born now again. The, you know, even as a lot of these stories meant that, that it doesn't really mean anything. Nobody believes for one minute that they think that the literal eight billionth person is being born on November 15, 2022. But it's a fairly good yardstick, and you know how humans, how we love to put things in little boxes. So we're going to play along today, and so uh, I'm sure you guys have been waiting for my roundup of overpopulation stories on the mainstream media. So how is the mainstream media playing up the overpopulation story? Well, uh, it will not surprise you that on the balance, of course, uh, the mainstream media is pretty clearly under the, want you to be under the misimpression that overpopulation is not a quote crisis, nothing to be alarmed about, and even if you are talking about it, that it is overconsumption is the problem on the planet, not overpopulation. But at least I'm going to give the mainstream media a little bit of credit today for at least discussing. Uh, the, the subject, because after today you will not see the subject mentioned again until we hit 9 billion uh, either next week or never. You know, of course, that is the big question, is will we hit 9 billion, but we're going to talk about 8 billion, and I was quite happy to see. Now, of course, in my mainstream media news feed, which I understand is not the vast majority of humanity's mainstream media news feed, but according to my Doomer news feed, and Yahoo News does a pretty good job of sending me stories that they think I might want to read, the number one story on the planet, the number one story on planet Earth today, at least for people with brains who are interested in this subject, and they went, Yahoo News went with the French news services, and guys, what I did is I went down to, to I picked out six stories, six stories, and then they started sounding redundant, so I'm not going to be able to uh, to get very deep into any of these. You can go on Yahoo News as well as I can and find all these stories. But anyway, number one story on the planet right now, on November 15, 2022, <clears throat> humanity hits the 8 billion mark. A baby born somewhere on Tuesday will be the world's 8 billionth person, according to a projection by the UN. And uh, I've already mentioned this uh, quote because he made it weeks ago, is when this quote was actually made and probably repeated by our Doomer-in-Chief UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, quote, the milestone is an occasion 
to celebrate, to celebrate diversity and advancements while considering humanity's shared responsibility for the planet. So right there, this is what the United Nations thinks about <coughs> the planet, even the Doomer in Chief. Uh, saying 8 billion people on the planet is something to celebrate. Um, but anyway, they uh, talk and they break this down. So how many is too many? How many is too many according to the mainstream media? Population growth has magnified the environmental impacts of economic development. But while some worry that 8 billion humans is too many people for planet Earth, most experts say the bigger problem is the overconsumption of resources by the wealthiest people. Yes, and this is UN Population Fund Chief Natalia Kahnem, quote, Some express concerns that our world is overpopulated. I am here to say clearly that the sheer number of human lives is not, is not a cause for fear, close quote, and this is the chief of the United Nations office uh, looking at overpopulation, dealing with population issue, stating for the record in the mainstream media, clearly the number of human lives is not a cause for fear. Yes. And uh, th this will really get the conspiracy wackos uh, panties in a wide. Joel Cohen of Rockefeller University's Laboratory of Populations. Yes, the, uh, the <laughs> Rockefeller University's Laboratory of Populations told AFP the question of how many people Earth can support has two sides, natural limits and human choices. Yes, our choices result in humans consuming far more biological resources such as forests and land than the planet can regenerate each year. The overconsumption of fossil fuels, for example, leads to more carbon dioxide emissions responsible for global warming. So this is uh, Joel Cohen of Rockefeller University's Population Lab. Quote, we, meaning humans, we are stupid. We lack foresight. We are greedy. We don't use the information we have. That is where the choices and the problems lie. Close quote, said Cohen, and lie is right. However, Cohen rejects the idea that humans are a curse on the planet. So we are stupid, we lack foresight, we are greedy, but according to Rockefeller University, Professor, we are not a curse on the planet. Yes, the UN projects the population to continue growing to about eight and a half billion in 2030, 9.7 billion in 2050, and peaking around 10.4 billion in the 2080s. Uh, anyway, we have 3,136 comments on this story. 
And we're going to check in with this comment from some fellow named Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty. <clears throat> from the point of view of every one of our fellow Earthlings, we humans share our planet with, with the possible exception of rats and domestic pets and livestock, humans are not only stupid and greedy, but are the single biggest curse ever inflicted upon this planet, period. This whole overpopulation versus overconsumption debate is so boring. This is not an either or issue. It is a both and issue. This snake has two heads or three if you add technology. The bottom line, someone who is never born has an ecological slash carbon footprint of exactly zero. End of debate. And then, of course, Humpty Dumpty was immediately told by some original comedian to off himself if he wants to depopulate the planet. But uh, we're going to go from AFP to Time Magazine. And uh, Time Magazine puts it right up there. Time Magazine weighing in on 8 billion people on the planet. Take it away, Time Magazine, global population size should not be calls for alarm. And there you go. Global population size should not be calls for alarm, but a rally cry for change. Yes, on November, on November 15th, today, the world's population will hit 8 billion. In many ways, this is a global success story. Yes. Representing the culmination of longer life expectancies, fewer maternal and child deaths, and increasingly effective healthcare systems. Yet, at every milestone of population growth, we witness panic and inflammatory headlines warning that the number of humans is too high, too much for a planet staggering under rampant inequality, humanitarian crises, and climate change. This agitation may feel especially resonant in a world that is increasingly unequal and continually buffeted by emergencies. But, but, the sheer number of people alone is not calls for alarm. Yes, and then what they go into is the old saw about uh, the global growth rate slowing down. And, uh, but, you know, this whole bullshit argument uh, about the growth rate slowing down, well, in a lot of places, uh, is that, as they just said, the, so it says the global growth, growth rate has been slowing since the mid-1960s, but at the point the global growth rate, since the global growth rate started slowing down, the population of the planet has more than doubled and will continue to grow, according to this, for another 60 years. Uh, we shall see about these. Um, Looking exclusively at population numbers comes with two great dangers. First, focusing on numbers alone treats people as 
commodities, stripping them of their rights and humanity. Yes, and secondly, purely looking at numbers can obscure the dynamics of power and privilege at the heart of many population debates. And here, Time Magazine uh, goes off on this red herring. Um, yes, so how does this bullshit close in Time Magazine? <clears throat> By recognizing and supporting the innate value and rights of every individual person, you know, including the right to have 25 children, we can, we can build a world in which all 8 billion of us are able to thrive and prosper. Yes. Uh, so, obviously, Humpty Dumpty has something to say about Time Magazine's view of the situation. Humpty Dumpty. Global population size should be and is the number one calls for alarm on the planet, period, hands down, with no second calls for alarm anywhere in the rear view mirror. Just setting the record straight for time magazine. All right, my deck is now covered with white. All right, I'm just going to uh, look at a few more. So how is Associated Press playing the story? Good old AP. World population hits 8 billion creating many challenges. And they, of course, good for, good for AP, they dateline this Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, so they're talking a lot about um, Sub-Saharan Africa, I guess, coming from Lagos, Nigeria. The world's population will likely hit an estimated 8 billion people today according to a UN projection, with much of the growth coming from developing nations in Africa. Among them is Nigeria, where resources are already stretched to the limit. More than 15 million people in Lagos already compete for everything from electricity to light their homes to spots on crowded buses, often for two-hour commutes each way in this sprawling megacity. Yes, and over the next three decades, the West African nation's population is expected to soar even more from 216 million this year to 375 million people in the next 30 years, the UN says that will make Nigeria the fourth most populous country in the world after India, China, and of course the US. And if anybody on this planet believing for one second that the population of Nigeria is just going to keep right on humming along till it hits 375 million people uh, in 30 years. Uh, in, 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 anyway, I don't have time for you. Yes. <clears throat> this is Yang Dalyup, an urban planning and development consultant in Nigeria. Can you? <laughs> an urban planning consultant in Nigeria. <coughs> there you go. We are overstretching what we have, the housing, the roads, the hospitals, the schools, everything is overstretched. Yes, 
the upward trend threatens to leave even more people in developing countries further behind as governments struggle to provide enough classrooms and jobs for a rapidly growing number of youth and food insecurity becomes an even more urgent problem. Nigeria is among eight countries the UN says will account for more than half of the world's population growth between now and 2050, along with fellow African nations, Congo, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, uh, quoting the UN, quote, the population in many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa is projected to double between 2022 and 2050, putting additional pressure on already strained resources and challenging policies aimed to reduce poverty and inequalities. Close, 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 close quote. And then of course, nowhere does it mention here the fact that Africa's, as Africa's population has doubled in the last 50 years or whatever, the population of every other earthling that African humans share Africa with has declined by like 75%. So humans double, every other African that humans share the planet with is down 75%. So when humans double again, what does that mean for the other 25% of fellow earthlings humans share the planet with? It means that every single fellow earthling, you know, I'm talking about the, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about lions, elephants, giraffes, rhinos, hippos, uh, the usual guys will be obliterated off of this planet in the next 30 years. The Congo rainforest will not exist in 30 years. Every one of these charismatic animals will be gone. And you will hear over and over that Africa, you know, holding out its hands to honky for all of this food aid that you cannot blame it on Africans. They say that you can't blame climate change on Africans. I want to know who you can blame the uh, every single one of Africa's uh, fellow earthlings getting obliterated off the planet, more and more of them going into the stew pot uh, on if it is not Africans and, well, and Chinese people. Okay, let's look at climate justice. This is Reuters news weighing in. We've heard from AFP, Time, AP. Let's hear from Reuters. Climate justice gets harder as world population passes 8 billion. Yes. <clears throat> the world population surged past 8 billion people on Tuesday, the UN said, warning that more hardship is in store for regions already facing resource scarcity due to climate change. Whether it is food or water, batteries or gasoline, there will be less to go around as the global population adds another two and a half billion people by the 2080s, according to UN projections. This is Stephanie Fieldstein, Population and Sustainability Director at the Center for Biological Diversity. Quote, every single person needs fuel, wood, water, and a place to call home. Yes, and here we go 
again, resource pressure will be especially daunting in African nations where populations are expected to boom, experts say. And these are also among the countries most vulnerable to climate impacts. Yes, in sub-Saharan Africa, where some 738 million people already live without adequate food supplies, the population is projected to jump by 95%. According to the Institute for Economics and Peace, the think tank warned in October that much of sub-Saharan Africa will be unsustainable by mid-century. I guess they were talking about the middle of the 20th century because much of sub-Saharan Africa was unsustainable by the middle of the 20th century and will be uninhabitable by the middle of the 21st century. So I want to know where all of these people are going to be live, living and what they're going to be eating. Yes. Uh, anyway, then of course they flip and go through the usual, uh, you know, talk about the lowering global birth rates, you know, outside of Africa and India. Uh, There you go. And then, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, and then, of course, ending with the quote from one of these clueless morons, whoever Wilmoth is. Uh, <clears throat> Humanity's impact on the natural world, quote, has more to do with how we behave than how many we are. Yes. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I think, uh, let's see, two more. I think we're beginning to sound like we've heard this somewhere before. This is another uh, AP analysis, and I'm embarrassed to admit this is by this dude, Seth Borenstein. I actually used to have some respect for Seth Borenstein. So this is Seth Borenstein, who's the closest thing we have to a doomer in the mainstream media, probably hoping to hold on to his job. Take it away, Seth. Earth at 8 billion consumption, not crowd, is key to climate. Yes. The world is getting hotter and more crowded, and the two issues are connected, but not quite as much as people might think. Experts say, yes. On Tuesday, here we go again. Uh, you know, we're going to hit 8 billion. The Earth has warmed almost 0 0.9 degrees Celsius since the world hit the 4 billion mark in 1974. Mm -hmm. Climate and population is a touchy subject for scientists and officials. Uh, while more people consuming energy mostly from the burning of fossil fuels, is warming the planet. The key issue is not the number of people as much as how a small fraction of those people are causing way more than their share of carbon pollution. Several climate and population experts told the Associated Press Yes, and then just, uh, it goes back in 
to this this false dichotomy uh, trying to separate uh, overpopulation from overconsumption. Once again, uh, it is all Honky's fault. It's that simple. It is that simple. It is those rich honkies fault. So if uh, sub-Saharan Africans want to go right on having seven or eight kids or whatever, that is fine and dandy. They are not to blame for the obliteration of everyone of uh, the Africans they share the planet with. It's all honky. Everything is honky's fault. Uh, the question is not about population, but rather about consumption. Yes. Uh, Jesus. How does this uh, BS end? All right. This is the last sentence. While most environmental groups try to avoid the issue 11 years ago when the world hit 7 billion people, the Center for Biological Diversity made special issue condoms with population and environmental messages such as wrap with care, save the polar bear. You can see uh, how much uh, that has worked. Uh, but we're not going to hear from Humpty Dumpty on this one. We're going to hear from David. 17 thumbs up. Well, we're going to give David 18 thumbs up. David, I did the single most important thing anyone can do to reduce their impact on the environment in the long term. I did not father any children. When I go, not only does my carbon footprint go with me, I also take away any carbon footprint my offspring would have had, and their offspring, and their offspring, and so on. The cumulative effect is enormous, so go away. Don't bother me anymore and let me run my car on gasoline, heat my home with natural gas, and eat my nice thick beefsteak grilled over charcoal. Okay? And uh, I know exactly what David is, uh, is saying. Uh, I've had the rant many times. And... Uh, we're going to close. It's not all bad news. I, I knew uh, that I was uh, going to find some good news. Uh, and it is coming from the conversation uh, from Maureen Litchfield, Dean of the School of Public Health at the University of Pittsburgh. Her essay, Eight Billion People, Four Ways Climate Change and Population Growth Combine to Threaten Public Health with Global Consequences. This is called uh, Mother Nature Fighting Back. Yes. There are questions that worry me profoundly as a population and environmental health scientist. Will we have enough food for a growing global population? How will we take care of more people in the next pandemic? What will heat do to millions with hypertension? Will countries wage water wars because of increasing droughts? These risks all have three things in common. Health, climate change, and a growing population that the UN forecasts will pass 8 billion people today. 
double the population of just 48 years ago. Yes. In my 40 year career, I have encountered many public health threats, but no, but none so intransigent and pervasive as climate change of the multitude of climate related adverse health effects, the following four represent the greatest public health concerns for a growing population. <coughs> All right, Mother Nature and Thomas Malthus, take it away. What are the big four? Infectious diseases killing more and more people, extreme heat killing more and more people, food and water insecurity, killing more and more people, and poor air quality, killing more and more people. Uh, but of course, you add up all of the numbers that all four of those kill every day and put it against the 240,000 humans that hit the planet every day and you will see a mismatch. But uh, so let's have this population expert answer the question, what can we do about it? Yeah, so we're going to try to find not breeding. Let's see. How can we reduce the effects of, uh, of overpopulation? Yes. Uh, let's see if keeping one's pecker in their pants. Yes. Uh, all right, you do not see that crazy idea, but we're going to close our rant. We're not going to close with Humpty Dumpty. We're going to close with Fig Leaf here in the comment section where you can find the most intelligent comment of any in that entire article uh, written by a population and climate expert. Fig leaf with 18 thumbs up. We're going to make this 19 thumbs up. Fig leaf. The only solution, the only solution to is, the only solution to all of these problems is to reduce the global human population to Earth's ecological carrying capacity, which is around two to three billion. That was the population in the 1960s and 70s. Eight billion humans. Today's population exceeds the carrying capacity by more than double. 19 thumbs up to Fig Leaf's comment. So anyway, uh, yes, little dog, did you survive? We have finished today's 8 billionth person roundup. Uh, let's see if this camera took that all. I am filming back on 640 resolution, which is probably where I will stay. Nice little dog. Get out there and enjoy your eight billion fellow humans while you still can before they come at you with an, an axe for your last can of beanie weenies. Bye guys. Are we still recording, little dog? All right, we are still recording, but the battery is blinking. So what is it? look like outside today since I started this rant. All right, we have a snow-covered porch. 
and the snow is coming down.